Good morning, I'm Pastor Gillespie from St. John Evangelical Lutheran Church and School, Sherman Center, Random Lake, Wisconsin. It's good to have you here with us for our Congregation of Prayer, a guide for daily meditation and prayer around God's Word. I was hoping our internet quality would improve, but it's uh, in the tank again. Um, the children are doing testing this morning. Apparently, this is as good as it's going to get. It's probably quite blocky and gross looking at the moment, but uh, hopefully you can hear me just fine. And of course, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So um, that's sufficient in the end. I come to you each morning at about 9 a.m. and uh, we pray through God's word. We're praying through 2 Kings chapter 10 and considering it. Uh, it is not uh, easy to hear, <laughs> uh, but it is essential for us to hear. All right. So uh, we talked about that yesterday a little bit at the conclusion, but maybe it's worth talking about here at the front end that... Um, we need to hear about God's judgment upon unbelief, upon sin, uh, not only for a threat, you know, towards our own unbelief, our own rebellion against God, um, but especially so that uh, we can see, uh, as I told the children yesterday, God always wins. <laughs> and that uh, when he says that a thing is going to come to pass, it does. All right. Uh, his word does not return to him empty, but it accomplishes that which it proposes which it purposes to do, right? And that, that should be a comfort and um, a consolation to us in all things, all right? Recognizing that God will bring about that which he has said he would, uh, especially when it comes to rebellion, unbelief, and the like, all right? Um, there is no improving our internet connection today. Um, I imagine there's probably people virtual learning at home as well. Um, I really don't know. We're not anywhere near our capacity. I'm looking here. We're currently running at like a tenth of our capacity. We've not even hit the peak, anywhere near the peak um, today. So it's going to be come and go as far as video quality, but uh, hopefully you can suffer through that. All right, so let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's say our memory verse for the week. Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. All right? And couple that with the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 3, and Jesus' dialogue with Nicodemus. And there, again, um, whoever desires to be saved must be born from above, right? Born again, right? So how does one become a little child? By way of baptism, right? Is there another way that gives us access to the Father, but by becoming a child of God in Christ Jesus through baptism? Nope, that's it. All right. I'm going to try not to be distracted by the internet quality, but uh, uh, it is kind of distracting for me. So again, even if you can't see, please listen. All right. Psalm 141. O Lord, I call upon you. Hasten to me. Give ear to my voice when I call to you. Let my prayer be counted as incense before you and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not let my heart incline to any evil, to busy myself with wicked deeds in the company with men who work iniquity, and let me not eat of their delicacies. Let a righteous man strike me, it is a kindness. Let him rebuke me, it is oil for my head. Let my head not refuse it. Yet my prayer is continually against their evil deeds. When their judges are thrown over the cliff, then they shall hear my words, for they are pleasant. As one one plows and breaks upon the earth, so shall our bones be scattered at the mouth of Sheol. But my eyes are toward you, O God, my Lord. In you I seek refuge. Leave me not defenseless. 
Keep me from the trap that they have laid for me and from the snares of evildoers. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I pass by safely. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right. Our first reading today is going to be from 1 Corinthians, now chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are diversities of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? And if the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body, just as he pleases, or pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed, there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather, those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary, and those members of the body which think to be less honorable on those who bestow greater honor, and our unpresentable parts have greater modesty, but our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to the part which lacks it, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it, and if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually, and God has appointed these in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, and after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, do all have the gifts of healings, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but earnestly desire the best gifts? And yet I show you a more excellent way. All right, so key here is that um, that we recognize one another as being uniquely given to by God, right? And that um, we're not at odds with each other uh, regardless of our office, right? So whether we're a hearer or a preacher, we're not at odds with each other. Um, one is here to serve in a particular way and others are here to serve in another. It would be no good for the preacher to have no one to listen, for example. How would that make um, any sense, right? And so the same, uh, it would not be good for... Um, the hearers not to have a preacher because then who would how would they hear right and that that's of course just those gifts that Paul gives us many other gifts of which to consider right not everyone is given the gift of visitation others may have that gift uh, some the gift of healing right to be a physician not all have that same gift of course this is not only true within the church but it's of course true in our world right and we want um, to encourage and support a diversity of talents and abilities right? And, and work together in community for one another, right? Not everybody needs to be the mechanic, not everyone the plumber, right? 
That doesn't mean that uh, having a general knowledge isn't useful, right? But but support one another in their specific gifts and ability. All right. So as much as I can do electrical work, uh, I'd much rather hire an electrician and support them in that work. All right. Just as by way of an example. Okay. Um, and then our reading is from Second Kings chapter ten. This is a really a continuation of what we heard yesterday from chapter nine. Uh, yesterday, the comment was that it's not an appropriate Sunday school reading. Um, if you thought that one wasn't appropriate, wait till you hear it today. <laughs> um, the kids here in school, they don't mind it at all. They can remember it. They actually get a lot of the detail, right? So um, it does work uh, intuitively um, to command attention, right? It's not boring by any stretch. And then, of course, we have to speak of the spiritual reality that is being conveyed there. All right. Now Ahab had 70 sons in Samaria, and Jehu wrote and sent letters to Samaria to the rulers of Jezreel, to the elders, and to those who reared Ahab's sons, saying, Now as soon as this letter comes to you, since your master's sons are with you, and you have chariots and horses, a fortified city also, and weapons, choose the best qualified of your master's sons, set him on his father's throne, and fight for your master's house. But they were exceedingly afraid, and said, Look, two kings could not stand up to him. How can... Then can we stand? And he who was in charge of the house, and he who was in charge of the city, the elders also, and those who reared the sons, sent to Jehu, saying, We are your servants, we will do all you tell us, but we will not make anyone king. Do what is good in your sight. So then he wrote a second letter to them, saying, If you are for me and will obey my voice, take the heads of the men, your master's sons, and come to me at Jezreel by this time tomorrow. Now the king's sons, seventy persons, were with the great men of the city who were rearing them. And so it was when the letter came to them that they took the king's sons and slaughtered seventy persons, put their heads in baskets, and sent them to him in Jezreel. Then a messenger came and told him, saying, They have brought the heads of, my, of the king's sons. And he said to them, Lay them in two heaps at the entrance of the gate until morning. So it was in the morning that he went out and stood and said to all the people, You are righteous indeed. I conspired against my master and killed him. But who killed all these? Know that nothing shall fall to the earth of the word of the Lord um, that he spoke by his servant Elijah. So Jehu killed all who remained in that house, the house of Ahab and Jezreel, and all his great men and his close acquaintances and his priests, until he left none uh, remaining. Then he arose and, w- and departed and went to Samaria. On the way at Beth Akkad of the shepherds, Jehu met with the brothers of Ahaziah, king of Judah, and said, Who are you? And so they answered, We are the brothers of Ahaziah. We have come down to greet the sons of the king and the sons of the queen mother. And he said, Take them alive. So they took them alive and killed them at the well of beth 42 men, and left none of them. Now, when he departed from there, he met uh, Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, coming to meet him. And he departed, or he greeted him and said to him, Is your heart right as my heart is toward your heart? And Jehonadab answered, It is. Jehu said, If it is, give me your hand. So he gave him his hand. And he took him up to him into the chariot. Then he said, Come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. So they had him ride in his chariot. And when he came to Samaria, he killed all who remained to Ahab in Samaria, till he had destroyed them according to the word of the Lord that he spoke to Elijah. Then Jehu gathered all the people together and said to them, Ahab served Baal a little, Jehu will serve him much. Now therefore call to me all the prophets of Baal, all his servants, and all his priests. Let no one be missing, for I have a great sacrifice for Baal. Whoever is missing shall not live. But Jehu acted deceptively with the intent of destroying the worshippers of Baal. And Jehu said, Proclaim a solemn assembly for Baal. So they proclaimed it. Then Jehu sent throughout all Israel, and all the worshippers of Baal came so that there was not a man left who did not come. So they came into the temple of Baal, and the temple of Baal was full from one end to the other. 
Then he said to one, to the one in charge of the wardrobe, Bring out vestments for all the worshippers of Baal. So he brought out vestments for them. Then Jehu and Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, went into the temple of Baal and said to the worshippers of Baal, Search and see that no servants of the Lord are here with you, but only the worshippers of Baal. So they went in to offer sacrifices and burnt offerings. Now Jehu had appointed for himself eighty men on the outside, and he had said, If any of the men who whom I have brought into your hands escapes, whoever lets him escape shall be it shall be his life. Um sorry, I lost my spot there. It shall be uh, where did I my eyes skip there. He brought in the da, 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 da. Oh, it shall be his life for the life of the other. There we go. Verse 25. Now it happened, as soon as he had made an end of the offering of the burnt offering, the Jehu said to the guard and to the captains, Go in and kill them, and let no one come out. And they killed them with the edge of the sword. Then the guards and the officers threw them out and went into the inner room of the temple of Baal. And they brought the sacred pillars out of the temple of Baal and burned them. Then they broke down the sacred pillar of Baal and tore down the temple of Baal and made it a refuse dump to this day. Thus Jehu destroyed Baal from Israel. However, Jehu did not turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel sin, that is, from the golden calves that were at Bethel and Dan. And the Lord said to Jehu, Because you have done well in doing what is right in my sight and have done to the house of Ahab all that was in my heart, your son shall sit on the throne of Israel to the fourth generation. But Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord of God of Israel with all his heart, for he did not depart from the sins of Jeroboam, who had made Israel sin. In those days, the Lord began to cut off parts of Israel, and Hazael conquered them in all the territory of Israel, from the Jordan eastward, all the land of Gilead, that is Gad, Reuben, and Manasseh, from the Aror, which is by the river Arnon, including Gilead and Bashan. Now all the acts of Jehu, all that he did, and all his might, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Jehu rested with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria. Then Jehoahaz, Jehoahaz, there we go, his son reigned in his place. And the period that Jehu reigned over Israel and Samaria was 28 years. All right, there ends the reading. Again, apologies for those of you uh, trying to watch. Uh, I recognize that the uh, internet capability is unacceptable today. Uh, and it's, of course, disappointing to me as well. But so it goes, apparently. Just looking to see, is there anything I can do? I mean, even run a speed test here. And just see what happens when I run a speed test. <laughs> Give me a moment. All right, plenty of download speed. So that's not our problem. Mm, actually, not that much download speed either. Mm, plenty of upload speed, actually. Um, so it's not clear to me what's going on with our upload speed. Must be with the provider. How about we do this? How about um, I reboot the feed? All right. And we'll see if we can't get the video back. All right. So just give me one moment here. All right, I've rebooted the stream. Let's see if that actually works better. Maybe it's the uh, Dallas server, which was causing us problems. All right, um, let's do our catechesis then. How many sons were in the house of Ahab? It says there are 70 sons, right? Um, and what, of what number, or what does the murder of Ahab's 70 sons remind us of? For this, you'd have to go back to uh, Judges, chapter 8 or chapter 9. Yeah, that would be the slaughter of the sons of Gideon, right? 
Uh, what did Jehu do? He's a little deceitful here, a little manipulative. Yeah, he sent letters to the rulers, the elders, and the guardians of Ahab's sons, telling them to fight for Ahab's house. Of course, he is going to bring destruction upon them, um, but he wants to see their response. And their response was, they were terrified because Jehu had ke- defeated uh, two kings, both the king of uh, Judah and the king of Israel. What answer did the, they send to Jehu instead? This is a lot like uh, the three eunuchs yesterday. Yeah, we are your servants. So what did Jehu write to them? Take the heads of your master's sons and uh, come to me. All right. What happened when the letter arrived? Yep, these men, they slaughtered the 70 princes, right? The whole house of Ahab put their heads in baskets and sent them back to Jehu, right? I guess for fear. Uh, And where did Jehu put them? Yeah, in two piles at the gate of the city. And then Jehu proclaims the next day, not a word, this is a key here, we hear this twice. Um... Yeah, know now that nothing shall fall to the earth of the word of the Lord which he spoke concerning the house of Ahab. Right? So there you go. Well, it appears switching servers actually hasn't worked either. (laughs) It has the same problem. Uh, So I don't know what's going on there. Um, All right. Well, I'll just keep going. Um, If you rejoined us, hopefully you can hear us just fine, Um, even though the video has once again tanked for no apparent reason. Um, So, uh, yeah, not a word that the Lord has spoken against Ahab will fail. What happened when Jehu met the relatives of Ahaziah? Again, judgment upon that house, just as the Lord had said. He killed 42 of them. 42. um, That should remind you of the children, remember, who had mocked Elijah and called him baldhead, right? And were killed by the bears. Again, 42. Who was uh, Jehonadab? We've got him here in verse 15. Jehonadab. This is a leader of, well, I guess what we might call a conservative movement in Israel, um, who had, who strongly opposed Baal worship, right? So this is the key uh, opponent of Baal worship. And so then uh, we'll join in league with Jehu. And what happened in Samaria then? Jehu killed the rest of Ahab's household. Um, but notice that uh, Jehu is, is again, clever. Um, he's not exactly God-fearing, uh, which we'll find out in a bit. Uh, but he uses deceit, right? And what's his deception? That he would serve Baal more than Ahab had done, right? So he calls all the prophets together. Um, his ministers and all his priests uh, together to the temple. And then he's going to, he says, he's going to hold a great sacrifice, right? Uh, A solemn assembly, right? Yeah, here it is, the great sacrifice for Baal, verse 19. Um, Of course, Jehu is doing this so that he will destroy all the worshipers and the ministers of Baal in one fell swoop. One fell swoop, excuse me. What happened when Jehu proclaimed the assembly? Yep, they all came, right? Um, and then he also had them bring out their robes and vestments, right? So that everybody was was vested. And what did Jehu tell the ministers of Baal? Right? I think he's using the vestments as kind of a litmus test here, a diagnostic, to make sure that there's no servants of the Lord there who wouldn't wear those vestments, certainly, even if they were present. All right? Um, so protecting God's servants in a way. Um, but Jehu had also posted, it said there, what, 80, 80 men outside the temple? And then he gives the order, right? Is that uh, when the sacrifice is being made, um, to kill them so that no one escapes. What they do with the sacred stone of Baal, the pillar there, they tore it down and burnt it, right? Uh, again, this is a lot like Elijah's encounter with the prophets of Baal back in 1 Kings 18, right? Where they were slaughtered and burned. Notice also, what what did they do um, with this temple of Baal? 
They used it for a latrine or a re refuse dump. Um, I did a little research. You actually, um, they think they found this temple. They have a temple to Baal. And it's confirmed through relics that were left there. Um, but they also found toilets there. So um, I think it's in Lachish, modern day Lachish, which is kind of interesting, right? Because uh, we don't have the we don't have the location noted here. Uh, so maybe actually um, some archaeological evidence to prove that this was true. Uh, it didn't just happen. I think uh, Hezekiah does the same thing with a, another temple to Baal, right? So it could have been that one as well. Uh, what did Jehu not do though? Yeah, he didn't turn away from the sins of Jeroboam. Uh, that is the worship of the golden calves. Remember, they'd erected two of them. As if the first golden calf in the wilderness wasn't bad enough, then they build two and put one in Bethel and one in Dan. Um, and then, of course, then the Lord brings judgment upon his house. He used Hazael to reduce the size of Israel. Uh, Jehu reigning for 28 years. All right. So the word of the Lord does not return empty once it has been proclaimed. The words that had been spoken by Elijah were fulfilled in the violent overthrow of Ahab's house by Jehu. The heads of Ahab's sons were collected as surely as the head of the serpent would be crushed by the feet of the crucified Lord upon the cross. Though Baal worship had continued in the days after the fire came down from the heaven at Mount Carmel, the judgment of that day came to completion as the stone was burned and the temple torn down. As the water had been consumed around the altar of Elijah's sacrifice, now the site of Baal worship would become a site of human waste. And this is the final picture of the final judgment. When all idols and idol worshippers will be destroyed and cast off like eternal waste. All right, again, if you're trying to watch and you're not seeing me, uh, that's well known. I tried rebooting the feed that didn't work, uh, so just... Uh, do your best to listen and keep your eyes closed, not watch the very foggy video. <laughs> All right. Let's say together the uh, sacrament of holy baptism. What is baptism? Baptism is not just plain water, but it is the water included in God's command and combined with God's word, which is that word of God. Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. What benefits does baptism give? It works forgiveness of sins, rescues from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believe this, as the words and promises of God declare. Which are these words and promises of God? Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Mark, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. We pray. Well, Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant that they both perceive and know what things they ought to do and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfill the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray this day for the church and her pastors, for missionaries, teachers, deaconesses, and other servants of Christ in his church for the fruitful and salutary use of the blessed sacrament of the Lord's body and blood. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. All right. We pray this day in Thanksgiving with uh, Doug and Bryson, who celebrate their birthday. We pray for our households, Randy, Joseph, Andrea, Alan, Jerome, Ron, and Tom. We pray for those... Um, who are sick, receiving treatment, or recovering from illness. We especially pray for Marcella, Kelsey, Frank, Amanda, Dan, Timothy, Janice, and Colin, Ken, Norm, Sandy, Kathy, Jim, Elaine, and Mike. We pray for our homebound, Bev, David, Willis, Mickey, and Paul. We pray for the missions and mercy work of the church, especially for kindred heart families. We pray for the preservation of the word and the increase of the church amongst us. Continue to pray for the family and friends of Roy Herms. For all this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. All right, if you've got a hymnal at home, you can pull out your hymnal, hymn 404. Uh, I don't expect that you can probably see it on the screen. I suppose um, if you don't know it yet by heart, uh, you can uh, listen. All right, I'll try to lead us here. Jesus once with his sinners numbered Had no blemish of his own In the waters of the Jordan His true worth and work were shown Love and hope and endless spirit Here descended like a dove Father's voice resounded, Hear, my Son, the one I love. John confessed him as the Savior, Look, the sinless Lamb of God. Yet he dared not loose the sandals, of the one God's love had shown. Oh, how fair the feet of Jesus, bringing news of peace to us. Christ, the herald of salvation, preaching mercy from the cross. This the baptism of our Savior, greatly long to undergo. This the crimson cleansing needed, so the world God's love might know. This the mission of Messiah, as he stepped from Jordan's tree. Chosen and anointed, Son of God sent to redeem. Jesus once with his sinners numbered, all obedience was your path. You by death have consecrated water in this saving path. Dying to the sin of Adam, rising to a life of grace. We are counted with the righteous, over us the cross you trace. All right, good to have you with us for our Congregation of Prayer, a guide for daily meditation and prayer around God's Word. Uh, we'll come to you again tomorrow at 9 a.m. for uh, prayer, and we'll continue our catechesis then.
Uh, apologies for the video quality today, though the lack of video, ultimately, right? Um, I tried my best. Can't really do anything about it. Yeah, terrible internet. So it is. Uh, so we'll see you tomorrow, hopefully with less frustration. All right. God be with you all. We'll see you then.